Chapters 1 through 9 of the Second Book of Chronicles from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Second Book of Chronicles from the World English Bible. Chapters 1 through 9. Chapter 1. Solomon the son of David was strengthened in his kingdom, and Yahweh his God was with him, and magnified him exceedingly. Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every prince in Israel, the heads of the fathers' households. So Solomon, and all the assembly with him, went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for there was the tent of meeting of God, which Moses the servant of Yahweh had made in the wilderness. But David had brought the ark of God up from kiriath Jerem to the place that David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Moreover, the bronze altar, that Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, was there before the tabernacle of Yahweh, and Solomon and the assembly were seeking counsel there. Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before Yahweh, which was at the tent of meeting, and offered one thousand burnt offerings on it. In that night God appeared to Solomon, and said to him, Ask what I shall give you. Solomon said to God, You have shown a great loving kindness to David my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, Yahweh, God, let your promise to David my father be established, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this your people that is so great? God said to Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of those who hate you, neither yet have asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people, over whom I have made you king, wisdom and knowledge is granted to you. I will give you riches, wealth, and honor, such as none of the kings have had, who have been before you, neither shall there any after you have the like. So Solomon came from the high place that was at Gibeon, from before the tent of meeting, to Jerusalem, and he reigned over Israel. Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen, and he had one thousand four hundred chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen, that he placed in the chariot cities, and with the king at Jerusalem. The king made silver and gold to be in Jerusalem as stones, and cedars made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the lowland for abundance. The horses which Solomon had were brought out of Egypt and from Kew. The king's merchants purchased them from Kew. They brought up and brought out of Egypt a chariot for six hundred pieces of silver, and a horse for one hundred fifty. And so for all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria they brought them out by their means. CHAPTER Two. Now Solomon proposed to build a house for the name of Yahweh, and a house for his kingdom. Solomon counted out seventy thousand men to bear burdens, and eighty thousand men who were stone-cutters in the mountains, and three thousand six hundred to oversee them. Solomon sent to Huram, the king of Tyre, saying, As you dealt with David my father, and sent him cedars to build him a house in which to dwell, so deal with me. Behold, I am about to build a house for the name of Yahweh my God, to dedicate it to him, and to burn before him incense of sweet spices, for the continual show bread, and for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the set feasts of Yahweh our God. This is an ordinance for ever to Israel. The house which I build is great, for our God is great above all gods, since heaven and the heaven of heavens can't contain him. Who am I, then, that I should build him a house, except just to burn incense before him? Now, therefore, send me a man skilful to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass, and in iron, and in purple, and crimson, and blue, and who knows how to engrave engravings, to be with the skilful men who are with me in Judah and Jerusalem, whom David my father provided. Send me also cedar trees, fir trees, and algum trees out of Lebanon, for I know that your servants know how to cut timber in Lebanon, and, behold, my servants shall be with your servants, even to prepare me timber in abundance, for the house which I am about to build shall be great and wonderful. Behold, I will give to your servants, the cutters who cut timber, twenty thousand measures of beaten wheat, and twenty thousand measures of barley, and twenty thousand baths of wine, and twenty thousand baths of oil. 
Then Huram, the king of Tyre, answered in writing, which he sent to Solomon, Because Yahweh loves his people, he has made you king over them. Huram continued, Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, that made heaven and earth, who has given to David, the king, a wise son, endowed with discretion and understanding, that should build a house for Yahweh, and a house for his kingdom. Now I have sent a skilful man, endowed with understanding, of Huram my father's, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre, skilful to work in gold, and in silver, in brass, in iron, in stone, and in timber, in purple, in blue, and in fine linen, and in crimson, also to engrave any kind of engraving, and to devise any device, that there may be a place appointed to him with your skilful men, and with the skilful men of my lord David your father. Now, therefore, the wheat and the barley, the oil and the wine, which my lord has spoken of, let him send to his servants, and we will cut wood out of Lebanon, as much as you shall need, and we will bring it to you in floats by sea to Joppa, and you shall carry it up to Jerusalem. Solomon numbered all the foreigners who were in the land of Israel, after the numbering with which David his father had numbered them, and they were found one hundred fifty-three thousand six hundred. He set seventy thousand of them to bear burdens, and eighty thousand who were stone-cutters in the mountains, and three thousand six hundred overseers to set the people at work. CHAPTER three. Then Solomon began to build the house of Yahweh at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where Yahweh appeared to David his father, which he prepared in the place that David had appointed, in the threshing-floor of Ornan the Jebusite. He began to build in the second day of the second month, in the fourth year of his reign. Now these are the foundations which Solomon laid for the building of the house of God. The length by cubits after the first measure was sixty cubits, and the breadth twenty cubits. The porch that was in front, its length, according to the breadth of the house, was twenty cubits, and the height one hundred and twenty, and he overlaid it with pure gold. The greater house he made a ceiling with fir wood, which he overlaid with fine gold, and ornamented it with palm trees and chains. He garnished the house with precious stones for beauty, and the gold was gold of parvem. He overlaid also the house, the beams, the thresholds, and its walls, and its doors, with gold, and engraved cherubim on the walls. He made the most holy house. Its length, according to the breadth of the house, was twenty cubits, and its breadth twenty cubits, and he overlaid it with fine gold, amounting to six hundred talents. The weight of the nails was fifty shekels of gold. He overlaid the upper rooms with gold. In the most holy house he made two cherubim of image work, and they overlaid them with gold. The wings of the cherubim were twenty cubits long, the wing of the one was five cubits, reaching to the wall of the house, and the other wing was five cubits, reaching to the wing of the other cherub. The wing of the other cherub was five cubits, reaching to the wall of the house, and the other wing was five cubits, joining to the wing of the other cherub. The wings of these cherubim spread themselves forth twenty cubits, and they stood on their feet, and their faces were toward the house. He made the veil of blue and purple and crimson and fine linen, and ornamented it with cherubim. Also he made before the house two pillars of thirty-five cubits high, and the capital that was on the top of each of them was five cubits. He made chains in the oracle, and put them on the tops of the pillars, and he made one hundred pomegranates, and put them on the chains. He set up the pillars before the temple, one on the right hand, and the other on the left, and called the name of that on the right Jachin, and the name of that on the left Boaz. CHAPTER Four. Then he made an altar of brass, twenty cubits its length, and twenty cubits its breadth, and ten cubits its height. Also he made the molten sea of ten cubits from brim to brim, round in compass, and its height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits encircled it. Under it was the likeness of oxen, which encircled it, for ten cubits, encircling the sea. The oxen were in two rows, cast when it was cast. It stood on twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east, and the sea was set on them above, and all their hinder parts were inward. It was a hand-breadth thick, and its brim was worked like the brim of a cup, like the flower of a lily. It received and held three thousand baths. He made also ten basins, and put five on the right hand and five on the left, to wash in them, 
such things as belonged to the burnt offering they washed in them, but the sea was for the priest to wash in. He made the ten lampsteads of gold according to the ordinance concerning them, and he set them in the temple, five on the right hand and five on the left. He made also ten tables, and placed them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. He made one hundred basins of gold. Furthermore he made the court of the priests, and the great court, and doors for the court, and overlaid their doors with brass. He then set the sea on the right side of the house eastward, toward the south. Huram made the pots, and the shovels, and the basins. So Huram made an end of doing the work that he did for King Solomon in the house of God, the two pillars, and the bowls, and the two capitals which were on top of the pillars, and the two networks to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on top of the pillars, and the four hundred pomegranates for the two networks, two rows of pomegranates for each network, to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the pillars. He made also the bases, and the basins he made on the bases, one sea and the twelve oxen under it. Huram his father also made the pots, the shovels, the forks, and all its vessels for King Solomon for the house of Yahweh of bright brass. The king cast them in the plain of the Jordan, in the clay ground between Succoth and Jeridoth. Thus Solomon made all these vessels in great abundance, for the weight of the brass could not be found out. Solomon made all the vessels that were in the house of God, the golden altar also, and the tables, with the showbread on them, and the lampsteads with their lamps, to burn according to the ordinance before the oracle, of pure gold, and the flowers and the lamps and the tongs of gold, and that perfect gold, and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons, and the firepans of pure gold, and as for the entry of the house, the inner doors of it for the most holy place, and the doors of the main hall of the temple were of gold. Chapter 5 Thus all the work that Solomon did for the house of Yahweh was finished. Solomon brought in the things that David his father had dedicated, even the silver and the gold and all the vessels, and put them in the treasuries of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, and all the heads of the tribes, the princes of the fathers' households of the children of Israel, to Jerusalem, to bring up the ark of the covenant of Yahweh out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves to the king at the feast, which was in the seventh month. All the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark, and they brought up the ark, and the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. These the priests the Levites brought up. King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled to him were before the ark, sacrificing sheep and cattle, that could not be counted nor numbered for multitude. The priests brought in the ark of the covenant of Yahweh to its place, into the oracle of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread forth their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim covered the ark and its poles above. The poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the ark before the oracle, but they were not seen outside, and there it is to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tables which Moses put at Horeb, when Yahweh made a covenant with the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt. It happened, when the priests had come out of the holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves, and didn't keep their divisions, also the Levites who were singers, all of them, even Asaph, Heman, Judithan, and their sons and their brothers, arrayed in fine linen, with cymbals and stringed instruments and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them one hundred twenty priests sounding with trumpets. It happened, when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking Yahweh, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised Yahweh, saying, For he is good, for his loving kindness endures for ever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of Yahweh, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of Yahweh filled the house of God. Chapter 6 Then Solomon said, Yahweh has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness, but I have built you a house of habitation, and a place for you to dwell in for ever. The king turned his face, and blessed all the assembly of Israel, and all the assembly of Israel stood. He said, Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to David my father, and has with his hands fulfilled it, saying, 
Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be prince over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel. But Yahweh said to David my father, Whereas it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless you shall not build the house, but your son, who shall come forth out of your body, he shall build the house for my name. Yahweh has performed his word that he spoke, for I have risen up in the place of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as Yahweh promised, and I have built the house for the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel. There I have set the ark, which is the covenant of Yahweh, which he made with the children of Israel. He stood before the altar of Yahweh in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread forth his hands, for Solomon had made a bronze scaffold five cubits long, and five cubits broad, and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court, and on it he stood, and kneeled down on his knees before all the assembly of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven, and he said, Yahweh, the God of Israel, there is no God like you, in heaven or on earth, you who keep covenant and loving kindness with your servants, who walk before you with all their heart, who have kept with your servant David, my father, that which you promised him. Yes, you spoke with your mouth, and have fulfilled it with your hand, as it is this day. Now, therefore, Yahweh, the God of Israel, keep with your servant David, my father, that which you promised him, saying, There shall not fail you a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your children take heed to their way, to walk in my law as you have walked before me. Now, therefore, Yahweh, the God of Israel, let your word be verified, which you spoke to your servant David. But will God indeed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens can't contain you, how much less this house which I have built. Yet have respect for the prayer of your servant, and to his supplication, Yahweh my God, listen to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you, that your eyes may be opened toward this house day and night, even toward the place where you have said that you would put your name, to listen to the prayer which your servant shall pray toward this place. Listen to the petitions of your servant and of your people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place. Yes, hear from your dwelling place, even from heaven, and when you hear, forgive. If a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath is laid on him to cause him to swear, and he comes and swears before your altar in this house, then hear from heaven, and do, and judge your servants, bringing retribution to the wicked, to bring his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous, to give him according to his righteousness. If your people Israel be struck down before the enemy, because they have sinned against you, and shall turn again and confess your name, and pray and make supplication before you in this house, then hear from heaven, and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them again to the land which you gave to them and to their fathers. When the sky is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against you, if they pray toward this place, and confess your name, and turn from their sin, when you afflict them, then hear in heaven, and forgive the sin of your servants, and of your people Israel, when you teach them the good way in which they should walk, and send rain on your head, which you have given to your people for an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence, if there is blight or mildew, locust or caterpillar, if their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer and supplication be made by any man, or by all your people Israel, who shall know every man his own plague and his own sorrow, and shall spread forth his hands toward this house, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive, and render to every man according to all his ways, whose heart you know. For you, even you only, know the hearts of the children of men, that they may fear you, to walk in your ways, so long as they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Moreover, concerning the foreigner, who is not of your people Israel, when he shall come from a far country for your great name's sake, and your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm, when they shall come and pray toward this house, then hear from heaven, 
even from your dwelling-place, and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you for, that all the peoples of the earth may know your name, and fear you, as does your people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemies, by whatever you shall send them, and they pray to you toward this city which you have chosen, and the house which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no man who doesn't sin, and you are angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captive to a land far off or near, yet if they shall repent themselves in the land where they are carried captive, and turn again, and make supplication to you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done perversely, and have dealt wickedly, if they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, where they have carried them captive, and pray toward their land, which you gave to their fathers, and the city which you have chosen, and toward the house which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven, even from your dwelling-place, their prayer and their petitions, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, my God, let, I beg you, your eyes be open, and let your ears be attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, Yahweh God, into your resting-place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests, Yahweh God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in goodness. Yahweh, God, don't turn away the face of your anointed. Remember your loving kindnesses to David your servant. Chapter 7 Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven, and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifices, and the glory of Yahweh filled the house. The priests could not enter into the house of Yahweh, because the glory of Yahweh filled Yahweh's house. All the children of Israel looked on, when the fire came down, and the glory of Yahweh was on the house, and they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground on the pavement, and worshipped, and gave thanks to Yahweh, saying, For he is good, for his loving kindness endures for ever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifice before Yahweh. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty-two thousand head of cattle, and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. The priests stood, according to their positions, the Levites also with instruments of music of Yahweh, which David the king had made to give thanks to Yahweh, when David praised by their ministry, saying, For his loving kindness endures for ever. The priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon made the middle of the court holy that was before the house of Yahweh, for there he offered the burnt offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offering, and the meal offering, and the fat. So Solomon held the feast at that time seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great assembly, from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt. On the eighth day they held a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. On the three-and-twentieth day of the seventh month he sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the goodness that Yahweh had shown to David, and to Solomon, and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of Yahweh, and the king's house, and he successfully completed all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of Yahweh and in his own house. Yahweh appeared to Solomon by night, and said to him, I have heard your prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the sky so that there is no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land." Now my eyes shall be open, and my ears attentive, to the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and made this house holy, that my name may be there for ever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. As for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and will keep my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom, according as I covenanted with David your father, saying, there shall not fail you a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you turn away, and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, 
and shall go and serve other gods, and worship them, then I will pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them, and this house, which I have made holy for my name, I will cast out of my sight, and I will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. This house, which is so high, every one who passes by it shall be astonished, and shall say, Why has Yahweh done thus to this land and to this house? They shall answer, Because they abandoned Yahweh, the God of their fathers, who brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and took other gods, worshipped them, and served them. Therefore he has brought all this evil on them. CHAPTER Eight. It happened at the end of twenty years, in which Solomon had built the house of Yahweh, and his own house, that the cities which Huram had given to Solomon, Solomon built them, and caused the children of Israel to dwell there. Solomon went to Hamath Zobah, and prevailed against it. He built Tadmor in the wilderness, and all the storage cities, which he built in Hamath. Also he built Beth Horan the upper, and Beth Horan the lower, fortified cities, with walls, gates, and bars, and Baalath, and all the storage cities that Solomon had, and all the cities for his chariots, and all the cities for his horsemen, and all that Solomon desired to build for his pleasure in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. As for all the people who were left of the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, who were not of Israel, of their children who were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel didn't consume, of them Solomon conscripted forced labor to this day. But of the children of Israel Solomon made no servants for his work, but they were men of war, and chief of his captains, and rulers of his chariots and of his horsemen. Those who were the chief officers of King Solomon, even two hundred fifty, who ruled over the people. Solomon brought up the daughter of Pharaoh out of the city of David to the house that he had built for her, for he said, My wife shall not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel, because the places where the ark of Yahweh has come are holy. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings to Yahweh on the altar of Yahweh, which he had built before the porch, even as the duty of every day required, offering according to the commandment of Moses, on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the set feasts, three times in the year, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tents. He appointed, according to the ordinance of David his father, the divisions of the priests to their service, and the Levites to their offices, to praise and to minister before the priests, as the duty of every day required, the doorkeepers also by their divisions at every gate, for so had David the man of God commanded. They didn't depart from the commandment of the king to the priests and Levites concerning any matter, or concerning the treasures. Now all the work of Solomon was prepared to the day of the foundation of the house of Yahweh, and until it was finished. So the house of Yahweh was completed. Then went Solomon to Ezion Geber, and to Eloth, and on the seashore in the land of Edom. Huram sent him ships and servants, who had knowledge of the sea by the hands of his servants, and they came with the servants of Solomon to Ophir, and fetched him from there four hundred fifty talents of gold, and brought them to King Solomon. CHAPTER Nine. When the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem, with a very great train, and camels that bore spices, and gold in abundance, and precious stones. And when she had come to Solomon, she talked with him of all that was in her heart. Solomon told her all her questions, and there was not anything hidden from Solomon which he didn't tell her. When the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, and the house that he had built, and the food of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their clothing, his cup-bearers also, and their clothing, and his ascent by which he went up to the house of Yahweh, there was no more spirit in her. She said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in my own land of your acts, and of your wisdom. However, I didn't believe their words, until I came, and my eyes had seen it. And behold, the half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told to me. You exceed the fame that I heard." Happy are your men, and happy are these your servants, who stand continually before you, and hear your wisdom. Blessed be Yahweh your God, who delighted in you, to set you on his throne, to be king for Yahweh your God. Because your God loved Israel, to establish them forever, therefore made he you king over them, to do justice and righteousness. She gave the king one hundred and twenty talents of gold, and spices in great abundance, and precious stones, 
neither was there any such spice as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. The servants also of Huram, and the servants of Solomon, who brought gold from Ophir, brought aglum trees and precious stones. The king made of the aglum trees terraces for the house of Yahweh, and for the king's house, and harps and stringed instruments for the singers, and there were none like these seen before in the land of Judah. King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatever she asked, besides that which she had brought to the king. So she turned, and went to her own land, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred and sixty-six talents of gold, besides that which the traders and merchants brought, and all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. King Solomon made two hundred bucklers of beaten gold. Six hundred shekels of beaten gold went to one buckler. He made three hundred shields of beaten gold. Three hundred shekels of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover the king made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with pure gold. And there were six steps to the throne, with a footstool of gold, which were fastened to the throne, and stays on either side by the place of the seat, and two lions standing beside the stays. Twelve lions stood there on the one side, and on the other on the six steps. There was nothing like it made in any kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. Silver was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king had ships that went to Tarshish with the servants of Huram. Once every three years came the ships of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. All the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. They brought every man his tribute, vessels of silver and vessels of gold, clothing, armor, and spices, horses and mules, a rate year by year. Solomon had four thousand stalls for horses and chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen, that he stationed in the chariot cities, and with the king at Jerusalem. He ruled over all the kings from the river, even to the land of the Philistines, and to the border of Egypt. The king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedars to be as the sycamore trees that are in the lowland for abundance. They brought horses for Solomon out of Egypt, and out of all the lands. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, first and last, aren't they written in the history of Nathan the prophet, and in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shulonite, and in the visions of Iddo the seer concerning Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years. Solomon slept with his fathers, and he was buried in the city of David his father, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his place. End of the Second Book of Chronicles, Chapters 1-9